I like to call to order this evening's meeting and like to begin with the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to and the, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, for my chair report, again, keep it. I'll keep it short. I uh, just to get want to continue to thank everyone, um, board members, staff, um, and I don't know if I mentioned. I pointed out last at our last meeting. I'd especially like to thank all our custodian, our maintenance, our security, and particularly Mr. Lance Horton, who has been um, a big help to the East Haven School District uh, with volunteering his time the staff and of course his continuous efforts throughout the schools. I just wanted to uh, thank him on behalf of the Board of Education. And then I'll, I'll turn that over to the superintendent for the superintendent report. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Um, I'd like to also take the opportunity to thank um, extensively the Overbrook staff, Marissa Velasquez and her team and Joe Ferriola from Adult Ed. Um, and our par parent educators for coordinating all the uh, volunteers and efforts to unpack nine pallets of food from the food bank, bag it, organize it, and um, uh, deliver it, not deliver it, but hand it out to almost 400 cars at East Haven High School last Thursday. Um, Bob was also there, Lynn Bover, um, Jen Murray, uh, and various members from my cabinet, um, Lance Horton and his crew. It was a monumental task and effort, but a prime example of so much good that we have here in our community and how much people care um, and are supportive of that. So thank you everybody for your efforts in that. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Denezzo, who is going to give you a little presentation relative to some thoughts and ideas and options for graduation that we've been um, considering. Ultimately, these are all just options at this point. We are awaiting uh, further information and details from the state to um, finalize and uh, make, some, make some decisions regarding it. So Mr. Donazzo, thank you for joining us this evening. Is he frozen? Is Mr. Donazzo frozen? Hi, Mr. Donazzo. Mr. Donazzo. How are you? Good, can you hear us? You could be there. I, I can now, yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Well, just hold on. Um, so, so, do you have, um, Randall, does Vinny have screen sharing capabilities? Because he does have a PowerPoint that he's going to pull up and refer to as he uh, goes through these options. Uh, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay. So um, thank you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to um, to kind of fill everybody in with respect to some of the things that we've been thinking about with regards to honoring our class of 2020. Um, we uh, have been kind of waiting, quite honestly, on, on some guidance from the governor's office, which obviously came last week. Uh, and with that being said, um, we, we went through a variety of different decision-making um, kind of thought processes uh, relative to what, uh, what we hope to do. And again, uh, we were considering four different options right now. We're still waiting on, on continued guidance from both the health department and, and the governor's office, and, and I believe also from the state department of education as well. Um, but, you know, uh, our decisions are being made based on, again, the East Shore District Health Department and, and the governor's office currently. Um, as of now, um, in consultation with the superintendent, the health department is not recommending any um, uh, anything uh, any large gatherings prior to June 30th, and the governor's executive order that he has in place still limits the size of, of large gatherings. So we've been thinking about how we can best honor our students in the safest way possible, but trying to also keep it as close to a traditional ceremony as we possibly can, knowing that that's going to be a challenge for us, uh, for everyone. Um, 
for us, quite honestly, the focus is on our students experiencing that very special moment where they get to cross the stage and receive their diploma. So uh, whatever plan that we put in place that we're, we're hoping that that will uh, encompass that experience. So uh, the first option is your traditional ceremony. Again, we do not know how likely this is, but this would be between uh, any time between um, drop uh, a solid date. It is the time where we've given students um, the opportunity who have incompletes to make up their work. It's also a time that uh, we start to figure that students will be heading off to campuses if they're going away, if their universities are going to continue with in-person classes for next year. So we want to honor that and honor the, the fact that many of our students may likely be leaving um, their homes in, 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 in or around that time in August. The concerns with your, your traditional ceremony, we typically have around 2,000 to 2,500 guests come to our, our, uh, our high school graduation ceremony. Obviously, social distancing, it looks like that's not going to be um, uh, anything that uh, is going to be going away in anytime soon. So that's clearly a concern. Um, we, we did have some considerations with your traditional ceremony, such as do we limit it to two guests? Uh, we know that that's a challenge. We do have many uh, blended families in East Haven. So we do understand that and respect that. Um, uh, and then we also had um, considerations such as would these types of ceremonies require um, PPE, um, such as masks? Um, and then given the timeline of these, what uh, implications might it be with uh, very warm temperatures, caps and gowns, masks, and, um, and some of those considerations for um, individuals who may be asthmatic or have some other uh, um, respiratory uh, issues that they deal with uh, in general. So this is option one, it's your traditional ceremony. Again, that's our hope, um, how likely it is, we're not quite sure yet. Option two would be a social distance ceremony. And um, that would obviously be a consideration if social distancing measures are still in place. Um, you may have seen uh, a, a ceremony such as this um, at the Air Force Academy where they put chairs on their, uh, their football stadium field eight feet apart. They did limit it to two guests. Um, we considered should this be a students only event if, if, if appropriate. Um, if that were the case, we would certainly live stream it and record it for everyone to, uh, to observe and view and have as a keepsake. Um, and again, continuing with that consideration of uh, the personal protective equipment such as masks, heats, and, and, and the cap and gown impacts as well going into the summer months. So that is option two that we're considering right now um, as we move into uh, further guidance from, from the governor's office. Option three, which I think is one that's, that's picking up steam across the area and the state and working with area uh, high school principals, this seems to be one that is moving more um, more uh, likely for many districts. Um, this the, the benefit to this is this can occur anytime after June 12th. It can occur anytime after our last day of school. Um, it uh, the the idea, and this is again not set in stone, but the concept would be to have one vehicle per student, which can include family members, obviously, in the vehicle, uh, provided they live in the same home, and and uh, of course they have no way to uh, to regulate that. This would start at the Town Beach parking lot or possibly other locations based on guidance from the police department and traffic considerations that would have to be brought into, um, in, into, uh, into the thought. Uh, we did discuss the possibility of staggering the schedule so you wouldn't have 200 cars leaving the Town Beach parking lot at the same time. Um, it would be more of a, a longer drawn out type of event um, that we would consider doing. This would take a great deal of planning and, and a lot of logistical uh, things that would have to go into to it, but it would be a parade through town, ending up at the high school, hopefully with a police and fire department escort that would include possibly some of those pickup trucks that are that are playing music in the background, more of a very, very much a feel good um, type of event. Um, students would pull into the circle where the student would step out of their vehicle and receive their diploma in a manner that is not yet decided, but again, based on health and safety considerations, they would cross a mini stage and then move to a location in the front of the school where our yearbook photographer would take a picture of that student. Um, Mr. Steady from Steady Photography has committed the, the uh, digital images so that we could then create a virtual ceremony where students uh, would have their picture with their cap and gown and their diploma jackets um, all displayed throughout uh, a, a slideshow type of presentation. And we would also have the recorded speeches from our 
salutatorian and, 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 and dignitaries as well and, um, throughout the, uh, the typical traditional event. Um, again, the added benefit to this option is that it would allow family members to observe the moment they would be right there in their vehicle um, watching their son or daughter or brother or sibling um, step out and receive their diploma. So there is certainly that added benefit as well. And then our last consideration, um, and again, this is dependent upon um, any, any executive orders, but small mini ceremonies where if the governor allows gatherings um, but does not permit anything more than 50 or 100 people, um, where obviously social distancing measures would still be in place, um, we would be able to, and if you can envision kind of like our National Society induction ceremony where we have about 35 or 40 students um, and, and the, uh, and the uh, dig dignitaries as well, we would be able to have four or five smaller mini ceremonies. Um, again, this would likely be students only, live streamed and recorded. Students would be divided alphabetically depending on the size that's allowed to happen. Um, it would allow for speeches. We would continue to, to place chairs eight feet apart and practice social distancing. This would likely have to occur over a couple of days. Uh, we would have to have you know, the events spaced apart so that it allowed time for those to leave and those to come uh, and enter. Um, and again, it would require more than likely um, the protective uh, gear as well as considerations for heat um, later in the uh, into the summer months. So uh, the, these are the, the four options that we are considering at this time. These are not necessarily the only four um, as new ideas surface in the next you know, coming days. We, we do have to start to move towards planning and deciding on one of these four. Um, we are hoping that the governor's office will either give um, further guidance with uh, extended deadlines or timelines um, so that we can then plan based uh, you know, accordingly and appropriately. Um, but our number one priority is making sure that the students in the class of 2020 are, are honored um, the best way that we possibly can and as a traditional ceremony as we possibly can. Um, and, but again, we all understand and we respect the fact that um, some of those decisions um, are, are not exactly in, within our power at this time. Anybody have any questions? Vin, uh, Mr. Denazo, Jack Stacy, just um, a comment. Uh, you know, just off the reading this very quickly, I thought option three was fantastic. And a comment, um, I always thought at HSC where I taught we had the greatest uh, venue, you know, graduated right on Worcester Square. But on two occasions due to weather, we had to move inside and we put a two limit uh, person um, per student. Um, and I was part of the security contingent. I was literally run over. It, it's it, just for your information. I don't think that that'll work. Um, people will just disregard to, you know, the two person limit and uh, you'll have a lot of trouble, but you know, thanks for all the hard work that you're doing. It looks great. And for my opinion, I, I just love three. I think that would, that's, that's exciting. Um, especially coming into the circle and being able to get out, get a diploma, um, you know, it depends on how you want to do it. Uh, board members could be there or whoever um, spread out enough to, to view it. I think that'd be, that's a good idea. I agree Thank with you. Jack. I, I mean, feedback. hopefully that we'll have uh, some information soon. I know as a board member, as well as a parent of a graduating student, I, I would like to know um, what we might be doing as well. I, I, I agree. I think virtual is the best way to go with the cars in the parade. Mr. Genezo, um, Eric Santiago, I, I agree also um, with the, the car, um, the parade and car ceremony up at the top of the school with the pictures and all that. And I think it's a nice way to get our community involved as well through all of this. And um, I think we would get a, a, a big out, you know, big turnout that um, everyone would be excited. They, I think they would all come out and, you know, join in on like, you know, the festivities and be able to celebrate the graduation as like as a town. So. Thank you. Thank you all for your feedback. Appreciate that. Vin, you I, might want to just join in if I could. Jurisa here. One second to you. Um, you might have said it. Was there, was there a deadline on decisions? Uh, no, I, I think um, in working with the superintendent, um, the, you know, the governor has his briefs um, every so often. And I, I know that there is one coming up in the next several days. Uh, I'm hoping that by that May 20th date, which was, was the date that was out there from the beginning, I'm um, hoping that after that time, there is either further further timelines that are shared with us. Um, but at some point, and, and 
you know, I don't think we're looking at anything in the month of June right now. Even that motorcade thing, even, you know, we could do that any time after June 12th. That's going to require a great deal of planning and, and collaboration. So I think we're still looking at that type of thing into uh, late June, early July, or again, depending on um, uh, on uh, input that we get from the health department as far as those types of things. Anything that we do, we're going to share with them as well and run those ideas by them and, and then get their feedback first. So um, I would say we need to make a decision as far as which option we're going to go with within the next couple of weeks. Vin, Vin, regarding like date, I think um I know I think Brantford as well is going into July, right? That's the date that you're they're going in date in July as well. Um, that's what I'm hearing. I, yeah. I, I heard they were going well from from the start. I heard they were just going to go purely virtual. I don't know if they've changed course at uh, at all, but um that was what the feedback that I got from from their leadership team at the yeah, start. Yeah, I wasn't but, sure about an option. I just knew that they were doing it yeah. in July, so that that gives a little bit more time as well. Thank you. I, I, I think we have to be um, really what's going to dictate will be the health department saying what you can and can't do. And I think that once you get um, a little bit more um, clearance from the uh, governor and the health department, but I do think that we need to commit to a plan as soon as possible so people can plan, at least know what's expected. Um, I, I, I don't want to be the bad guy and say, hey, look what's going to happen. You know, we don't know. So I do think that the state will come forward and, and give some parameters around this so you can then very quickly or, you know, begin to plan for whichever um, avenue that you can take. But, it, 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 you know, option three sounds really, really good to me, too. So, and you did put a lot of work into this. So, but I think the sooner we can let people know the obvious, you know, we're all up against this. I mean, Brantford might, if they went full virtual, then they, that's why they have a date and they can now just go forward with that plan, which is, you know, at least everybody now is knows exactly what they're doing and when they're doing it, if they are. I don't know that they truly are yet. Yeah, Chi, I don't know the actual choice. I just know it was in July. I don't have a choice. Too. Yeah, definitely. So, thanks, Ben. Thanks for this um, presentation, too. Oh, you're welcome. Nice job. Anytime. Thank you. Hard work. Thank you. Thank Peace you. Out. Okay. Thanks again, Vinny. You're welcome. Thank you. Everyone stay safe. You too. Okay. okay. Um, at this time, the assistant superintendent is going to give a brief report. Sorry. Thank you. Um, at this time, I just wanted to extend my thanks to our many teachers in light of Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, we have seen many creative and innovative uh, teaching practices, and I appreciate their connection. I also appreciate the many families who have provided feedback on what's working and what's not and what we need to do better for our students and our community. We continue to monitor and evaluate the hard work of teachers and families to support our students. I also wanted to highlight the fact that recently Joe Marangel, social studies instructional leader and social studies teacher Lindsay Wright and I were afforded the opportunity to showcase some exciting work we are doing um, at a webinar offered by the Connecticut State Department of Education on student-centered instruction in social studies. It was specific to distance learning and we were invited back to uh, a longer, more extensive uh, report of some of the things that we're doing on May 18th. So I'm excited to highlight all of the great work that we're doing. Um, tonight, also on this evening's agenda, I believe there is, for your consideration, uh, a look at the math curricula resource adoption team's hard work in vetting resources for 6 through 12 math. Um, thanks to those members of the, the board who were able to attend the May 7th curriculum workshop um, where the team reviewed the options that were considered. Our team's protocol for reviewing resources to make sure we're using the resources of the district wisely is pretty robust. It includes reviewing materials for quality, uh, research-based alignment, and cultural responsivity, as well as compliance with our technology systems and data privacy protections um, and mathematical quality. We're looking for you to, um, we did provide an opportunity for you to review some of that material. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. 
And for those members of the community here in attendance or listening remotely, um, if you are interested in learning more about these grades six to eight and nine through 11 resources, um, we are happy to host a Zoom meeting session for both grade bands. Please email me at jmurray at easthaven.k12.ct.us if you would like to be invited to an information session. And that is all. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jen. Okay, I think that brings us to approval of meeting minutes for our special board meeting of April 28th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Michelle, it's Jack. Before we do that, can I make a comment? On? On the past two, on the superintendent and the assistant superintendent's reports? Okay. All right. So first of all, um, I, was, I wasn't able to view the superintendent's um, presentation uh, about the budget, but I just wanted to say that I've heard some really good feedback on the, the job that she did, so I wanted to compliment her on her presentation to those parties that were um, involved. And I also wanted to make a statement. Um, I don't know what other schools, but I do know that today um, the Academy went out and put signs on the eighth grade uh, student lawns, uh, congratulating them on moving up. I just thought that was a terrific idea. I happen to see some feedback. There were some things on Facebook today regarding that. So again, uh, congratulations to those, uh, the people at the academy and any other school that happened to be working like that uh, you know everybody's working so hard to make these kids uh, you know that are moving up uh, make it somewhat special so good job for everybody hey, thank you jack thank you mr stacy okay michelle delusia speaking uh approval of meeting minutes do i have a motion motion to approve the meeting minutes of 4 20 the special board of ed meeting do I have a second? Second it. Tiago, I second it. I second it. Second by Marianne Pellegrino. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, Michelle. So, yes. I keep freezing. I tried to stop as well. I just wanted to just before you move on. Jen, it was wonderful. I was present for that um, presentation. It was beautiful. Lisa, could you just wait till we finish voting? We, we have a motion on the, on the table. You keep freezing. I, don't, I didn't know that that's what it was. I thought Jack just finished, didn't he? Nope. No, he didn't. <laughs> Okay, so just give it a hold. Um, all right, so we have a motion on the table to approve the meeting minutes from Special Board of Ed meeting of April 28th, 2020. He did just. All in favor say aye. 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 Do we need to roll call? I think we actually we do. We have to roll call vote. You ready? Yes. Tia De Palma. Yes. Liz Esposito. Yes. Yeah. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. All in favor. Okay, motion carries. Which brings us to the consent agenda. We have approval of invoices for fiscal year 2019-2020 in the amount of $1,177,982.95. We have approval of purchase orders over 7,000. And we have approval of budget transfers in the amount of $282,151.95. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the review of invoices, the review of purchase orders, and the review of budget transports, uh, transfers in the amounts read. Do I have a second? I'll second, I'll second Liz Esposito. Okay, seconded by Ms. Mrs. Esposito. So before you, we have approval of the consent ag agenda. We will we'll have a vote at this time. Ellen, could you do roll call? Tia De Palma. Yes. Liz Esposito. Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio. Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. Michelle DeLucia. Yes. 
Okay, so that motion carries. That will bring us to audience of citizens. And as you know, um, anything that was sent in was shared with board members prior to the meeting and will be handled accordingly. So I am going to hand the meeting over to new business to the superintendent. Thank you, Ms. Lucia. Um, new business 6.1 discussion and possible action on resolution for schools and libraries universal services e rate for 2020-2021. Do I have a motion? Marianne Pellegrino. I move that we accept the resolution for schools and libraries universal services e-rate for 2020-2021. Eric Santiago, I second. Okay, so the motion before you is to approve the resolution for schools, libraries, universal services e-rate for 2020-2021. Can we have a roll call, Ellen? Tia De Palma. Yes. Liz Esposito. Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Marian Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion carries. All in favor. Um, 6.2 Discussion and possible action on Sodexo adult meal price increase from $3.75 per meal to $4.50 per meal. Okay, do, do we have a motion? Erica Santiago, I make a motion that we approve the Sodexo adult increase for meals. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Tia De Palma. Okay, so the motion is to approve the Sodexo adult meal price increase. Ellen, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Lisa? I said yes, hon. Oh, okay. Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Um, 6.3, discussion and possible action on the Deer Run ADA compl um, Handicap Compliant Playground Project. Do I have a motion? Tia De Palma, I make a motion um, to um, take action on the Deer Run ADA Compliant Playground Project as uh, discussed and explained in subcommittee. Erica Santiago, I second it. Okay, so the motion before you is to move ahead with the Dare Run ADA Compliant Playground Project. Ellen, can I have a roll call vote, please? Tia De Palma? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Miriam Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. All in favor, motion carries. 6.4, discussion and possible action on the purchase of athletic scoreboards for East Haven High School Gymnasium, East Haven High School Crisafi Field, and Joseph Malillo Middle School Gymnasium. And I'd just like to say before we go in and I get a motion, um, we did talk about possibly pulling funds from the rental account. However, I believe there are um, there is a certain amount of unutilized funds for spring sports that I think we might want to look at first in the operating budget. Okay, so if the board is inclined to approve the um, the scoreboards for the, the two for the high school and the one for the middle school um, with the recommendation made by Ms. Bovair and Mr. Verderam for um, Northeast scoreboards, we can utilize operational funds um, first and then rental funds if necessary. Okay, do I have a motion? Erica Santiago, I make a motion that we utilize the Northeast scoreboards um, and approve the recommendation by Lynn Bovair and Anthony Vertebram. 
I second it. Marianne Pellegrino. Okay, so the motion before you is to approve the purchase of athletic scoreboards uh, based on the recommendation of the athletic director and finance manager. All in favor, um, roll call vote. Tia De Palma? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Lisa? Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Lisa? Yes. And Michelle Belusha? Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Um, 6.5, the discussion and action on purchase of East Haven High School gym sound system. Um, not recommending any action on the, that this evening. We are still in the process of collecting some quotations and we'll bring it back to the next, uh, the board meeting. Okay, thank you. Yep. Do you um, need a motion to table that? Because no. I'll make, no? Okay. No, just no action. There's nothing right. to do. Yep. We'll move um, on to, yeah, 6.6. .6. 6.6, .6, discussion and possible action on the Adult Education Program Enhancement Project Grant, also known as the PEP Grants. Again. Tia De Palma. Oh, sorry. These, do just a little background. These are the, the grants um, that parallel our adult education for EL Civics, for NEDP, and for our Family Engagement Coordinator. Um, and the grant does include stipends um, for someone to facilitate the implementation of those programs. It's currently Joe Ferriol at Adult Education. Do I have a motion? Yes, Tia De Palma. Just, um, I make a motion to accept the Adult Education Program Enhancement Project Grant, PEP. Do I have a second? Santiago, I second it. Liz Esposito. I second it by Mrs. Santiago. Um, Ellen, can you put it to the board for a uh, vote? Tia De Palma? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Um, Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion carries, all in favor. Um, 6.7, discussion and possible action on personal contracts for Tracy Acera, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Deb Byers, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Devin Caroline, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Amber Conti, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Mark Coppola, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Elizabeth Hume, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Carol Pates, assistant teacher at Overbrook, Janet Sanchez, assistant teacher at Overbrook. Mamiko Falagno, assistant teacher at Overbrook. Maria Carbone, lead teacher, Overbrook. Karina Hume, lead teacher, Overbrook. Sharana Kennedy, lead teacher, Overbrook. Heather Mazuko, lead teacher at Overbrook um, and the high school. Jessica Sadie, lead teacher at Overbrook. Jennifer Thomas, lead teacher at Overbrook. Viviana Zamora, lead teacher at Overbrook. Um, Amanda Joy, parent educator at Overbrook. Sherry Francesi, lead parent educator at Overbrook, Daniel Resto, family engagement coordinator, adult education, and Scott Benoit, truancy officer district wide. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the personal contracts as listed by the superintendent this evening? Yes, Tia De Palma, I'd like to make a, um, a motion to accept the so aforementioned um, personal contracts. That's Second, Jack Stacy. Okay, seconded by Mr. Stacy. Ellen, can you do a roll call vote, please? Tia De Palma. Yes. Liz Esposito. Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio. Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. Michelle DeLucia. Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Um, and 6.8, discussion and possible action on the list of rehires and hires. Uh, Jeffrey Fletcher for the middle school coach wrestling um, and Amanda Bradley 
East Haven High School coach assistant volleyball. I make a motion that we accept the um, action, uh, the list for hires and rehires, the two positions. Marianne Pellegrino, I second it. Okay, so we have a, a motion put forward by Mr. Palma, seconded by Mrs. Pellegrino. Ellen, can you do a roll call vote? Peter De Palma? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle Delucia? Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Um, I'd like to request um, the addition of 6.9 on the agenda, uh, discussion and possible approval of the math curricular resources for grades six through 12. Okay, can I have a I'd motion like to make to add? a motion to add 6.9, right? Second, Erica yeah. Santiago. Okay, um, Ellen, roll call vote to add 6.9. Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Mary Ann Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. All in favor, motion carry 6.9 is added. So at 6.9, we have discussion and possible action on approval of math curriculum for grades six through nine. The math curricular resources, well, grade six, six through 12. Okay. All right. So can we discuss that? Yes. Yeah, so so I will, grade, I'm sorry. Grade six through eight is the Pearson and Vision math um, that will be rolling up from the elementary level that the board had already approved. And in grades uh, nine through 12 is the McGraw-Hill reveal math both programs of which the assistant superintendent presented to the board at the curriculum workshop last week. So we can discuss that, Michelle, may yeah. I say? If so, we get a motion. Mama, you discuss after the motion? We, we haven't yeah. been doing that. Yeah, no, right. we just do clarification well, prior. Clarification prior to the mo well, motion. But, but tonight, okay, I'm not gonna, all right. So I'm making a motion that we add, um, we accept the math curriculum, um, that was discussed at the uh, workshop last week for grades six through 12. Marianne Pellegrino, I'll second it. Okay, um, motion by Ms. DePalma, seconded by Mrs. Pellegrino. So at, the, at this time, is there any questions, discussion? Yes, I just, it's not a question, it's a statement that it was very thoroughly explained and they put in a lot of hard work and it's amazing how it came out to be so, um, a lot of input from all of the, the, the stakeholders. And I thought it was a great presentation. More than happy to vote for it. I agree with that. Thank you. I'll second Thank that. you. Okay. Yes, Jack, Jack Stacy. I just would like to say, Jen, you did a great job at the workshop um, and you made uh, a difficult uh, subject matter very easy to follow. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Thank you. I will also pass your you, those thoughts along to Jen Bauer, our math instructional leader, and the members of yes. the teachers. If teachers Please. were really involved, and and they will appreciate those kind words. Okay, Jen, so. I also wanted a second, well, a third, fourth. It was wonderful. I was there as well. Um, before when I was trying to speak, it, it, so I didn't know it, I I froze out. But you had asked a question about your presentation, just how everyone is receptive and some are not receptive. I received a few messages about the the whole process about being parents understanding and so forth. And Miss Church, Mrs. Church sent out the, uh, the survey, you mm -hmm. know, about the whole process. Some individuals are not getting the survey and they're having some, I'm getting I some negative. I think that that survey, Lisa, I think that survey is not related to the curricular resources for grades six through 12 that Jen circulated. The survey I think you're referring to is for distance learning. Correct. They're oh, two they, put both, they put both, they put, two things in the Texas messages to me. So it's just, it's just what there's not for both of them. No, there's just, no. there's not. Okay. So okay. The, oh. I think the survey that you're referring to that um, was circulated was about distance learning that might've ended up in some people's spam email boxes. It wasn't. I didn't get either. So it was news to me. That's why I mean, I'm trying it wasn't to obviously. related to Jennifer Murray's presentation on the six through 12 curricular resources. 
I think we want to make sure everybody receives information. So we'll, we'll, we'll certainly look into the, the, and provide recommendations to families and ensuring that um, their emails addresses are correct in PowerSchool. We can make sure. Um, but for now, did you have any questions about the curricular resources for no. um, the Envision Math program for grades six through eight or nine through uh, um, it's actually grades nine through 11. Our 12th grade math is a, a different elective um, course. Okay. But, no, but thank oh. you for clarifying it because I was given the wrong information. So thank you for of that. Of course, I yes, we're it. always trying to thank clarify. You. Thank you. Well. All right, are there any other questions? No, so the, then at this time, um, I put forward the motion made by, I think, Mr. Palma, seconded by Mrs. Pellegrino, which is 6.9, approval of math curriculum, six through 12, six through 11. Uh, all, in, all in favor, um, Ellen, roll call. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Liz Esposito? Yes. Lisa Geraci Anastasio? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. It would be all in favor, motion carries. So at th this time we're, we're coming to um, discussion concerning future agenda items. Is there anyone who would like to ensure there's uh, any, anything specific on the next agenda? That you, you could always email, of course, myself and the superintendent at any time prior to the meeting. But I, I would like anything. to clarify some, Erica, I'd like to clarify something. Did you say that you were going to, how are we going to rectify that problem? Because I received several messages. Are you going to resend the, the emails out or what are you going to do? Perhaps so, we could add an agenda. Point of order. Oh, sorry. Is there anybody, who are you talking? One the agenda. Talk, point of Lisa? order. We need to go back to the agenda. Um, if we could, we, we either talk, discuss future agenda items or, and then we can, um, you know, that can be done after the meeting, actually. But um, point of order, we're, we're discussing the future agenda yeah, I items. I asked the question, Tia. That's part of the problem here. I asked a question. Okay. All right. So how about at the next meeting, we go, we could, oh, we could go ahead and we'll add the agenda item on how to, uh, to discuss communication. Should the person... Is that what you're asking for, Lisa? Erica or Michelle, you need to really figure this out because it's ongoing. Even before, and I'm going to say I'm glad we're on film so everyone can see the ignorance. You don't disrespect somebody. Jack spoke. I tried to speak. You shut somebody out. Not appropriate. I'm discussing concerns. You let one person speak and you shut the other person off. Not okay. Not appropriate. I have okay. questions that I need to ask. No, no, no. I'm not done talking. I'm, I'm going to make a motion special. that we um, adjourn Tia. the meeting. Tia, I'm speaking. I'm done. You're ignorant. Ignorant. No, okay. you're disrespectful. I can Point count like order, two. I, Excuse me. Please, no, Michelle, I'm going to ask you to please people. Oh, I'm so glad this is on film because it, it doesn't it's stop. very inappropriate One, right two, now. three. It doesn't, no, you are. I was speaking. You don't let people speak. Okay. You're not okay, Tia. Doesn't go one way. All right, so we could, add, we could add Michelle, this, we could add this as a future agenda item, and um, this might be a good, a good time to end the meeting. Do I have a motion to end this evening? I'll, I'll email. Motion my. to adjourn. Okay. Second. I second it. Marianne Pellegrino, second. All right, meeting adjourned. <laughs>